I'm also now delighted to say I'm joined by Richard Power Said. He's a former Labour Party official and the author of a book, 1997, The Future That Never Happened, A History of New Labour. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning, Julie. Thank you nice so much. I, I note I note a tone of, of wear, weariness in, in, in your voice there, uh, Richard. Um, <laughs> Um, like, I mean, interesting that your book was about, you know, New Labour in 1997 and Tony Blair came in on a whirlwind of support, sky-high poll ratings, went on to win two general elections. Yeah, his support went down for each election, but he was still uh, a, a, a prime minister with a massive majority all three uh, terms. I don't think there's anyone right now other than maybe Keir Starmer and I don't know, maybe his wife, maybe Lord Ali, his biggest fan and donor, um, who thinks he's going to make it to the next time. But he's absolutely convinced that what he wants to be judged by in 2029, if we, he lasts that long, is on his six milestones. Not the five missions before the election, not the six first steps after the election, but now it's the six milestones. We've been going through them uh, with our audience about the NHS, uh, um, um, eco targets, um, schools, um, homes, bobbies on the beat, etc., uh, etc. Et the one thing that's missing, which is a glaring omission, given that these are supposed to be his priorities and we should judge him on them, is anything about either illegal or mass legal immigration. Why is that not there? Well, let's start with um, the uh, irregular immigration uh, question. Illegal uh, immigration. You had uh, it's illegal records. immigration, not irregular. It's illegal immigration. If you come to this country a, illegally, a, it's a, against the law. There's an interesting legal question there, which I think is incredibly boring to talk about, but I disagree with you, and we'll, we'll probably leave If you get on a boat without we documentation in France and you arrive in our country, you're an illegal 10, immigrant. Thousand. You've had almost 10,000 people deported since Keir Starmer took over. Number of deported foreign criminals is up 14% since last year. You've had this guy, the Engine King, uh, arrested. He's the guy who's suspected of being behind supplying uh, small boats equipment to people mm -hmm. smugglers. You've got the NCA leading about 70 investigations into people smuggling right now. You've had this border security boost, funding for the border security command. It's going to double to 150 million. You've got this new intelligence unit that's been... It's all going brilliantly. To use counter-terrorism techniques to crack down on the criminal gangs. This is how you do it. OK, great. And that's so, so, hey, if he's so confident, you'd think he'd mention it. Wouldn't that be a good way of people judging him? You've actually smashed the gangs. So I think the short answer to that is... I don't see why every single different policy area should be in every Even single Even though it's a major country. issue, and one of the major issues on which Tories lost the last election, and as you know, looking at the actual figures for the last election, this was very much a Tory defeat rather than a Labour victory. Let's talk about legal migration. People were given visas by the government to come and live and work in this country. We know that in the last few years, basically, it's, it's pretty much in terms of the actual numbers of people arriving, it's over a million most years now. Um, there's nothing in them. I mean, this is a major issue. This has massive impact on pretty much every one of the other milestones that are mentioned, does it not? If you, you need more homes. Well, one of the reasons you need new homes because we've, we've added millions more people uh, to the country. Uh, one of the reasons why people wait on the NHS is because we've added so many people on those NHS waiting lists. Um, why is that not mentioned? I think you've kind of just answered uh, your own question, actually, right. there, uh, Julia. The reason that it's really stupid uh, to have a, a, a target, like a numerical target for migration like the Tories tried and failed to do yep. um, during 14 years of, of Tory failure um, is that it's so intimately related with everything else, right? You know, how many new people do you have coming into the labour market because of birth rates? Um, how much uh, economic growth uh, do you need through those new workers? All these kinds of things are intimately related. And the idea that you would set a target now for what's going to be necessary in five years is absolute nonsense. Also, you're talking about kind of things like the NHS. The whole point is that most of our new NHS workers, maybe not most, an incredibly high proportion of new NHS workers are coming from new migrants to this country. Yeah, and, and why and do we do that? And why, and why is that necessary? We start uh, comparing like, oh, we want NHS capacity, oh, but we want less migration. It doesn't work that way. Well, it does that way. If you train up, look, if you tr right now, there are loads of young people who are putting their UCAS forms in and waiting for interviews and offers from universities, okay? Um, 
and, and there are loads and loads of really great students who've got straight A's in, in their science and their math subjects who are going to be rejected for places at medical school at universities in Britain because we have <laughs> no, a cap on the not. number of there people. There are not loads of people with straight A's there, who are going to be rejected. There are. There are, there, there are thousands nonsense. every year. You there are. I look this up. There up. are. And we don't have enough places. getting on with the job. We're going to have 92% so of routine from operations Philippines. appointments done within 18 weeks by the next election. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Sorry. Sorry. You think it's fantastic that someone could be referred by their GP for an operation, for treatment for their cancer, for instance, but they'll get seen, nine out of ten of them, not all of them, within four months. I mean, oh, oh, well done. We're such a proud, functioning first world country. It's a failure on the Tories in 14 years. But if that yes, is the is. limit exactly. of the Labour ambition, if after we 14 are years, If after 14 years you're asking Keir Starmer to magically change everything that the Tories have done over 14 years of Tory failure, then you're asking for something that obviously is impossible. I don't think and they're going to turn it around a in a few which months. Which is bad journalism. I don't... I don't think they're going to turn it around in a few months. No one expects that. But if they've not even got reasonable targets. I mean, why do we think only 75% of kids should be ready for school at uh, the age of four or five? Surely 100% would be the target. I don't understand why You're the, asking the expectations for targets. are so We're asking low. for targets that are reasonable but ambitious, right? And most people have actually been complaining about these targets, saying that they're not going to be achieved right i would say that they are exactly in that sweet spot between quite difficult to achieve so you're pushing whitehall to deliver a, a million and a half new homes by the end of this parliament that's the same as the tory target for the last five years for every single neighborhood that's really great stuff but it's difficult you're, to do you're talking about this stuff as if it's sort of getting a man on the moon this is basic stuff that most other countries manage to do with their no, eyes shut. No, yes, they, don't. they do. Is the there isn't thing. a housing and crisis across most of years. Europe. There isn't a okay, housing well, let's, crisis let's in America. Economics, um, let's talk about the economics target, for instance, saying that real household disposable income is going to be up. We're going to be richer. Parliament. You might say that that doesn't sound ambitious. Let's break it down. Let's think about what that okay. is. Household income, we all know what that is. Real means it's uh, been adjusted for inflation. Disposable means it's not the basic stuff in life that you need to live on. It's the not even little luxuries. It's like, can you replace your kitchen gadget yeah. uh, when it gets broken? After 14 years of stagnation for that uh, measure of, uh, of living standards under the Tories, longer than we've ever had since the Second World War, mm. far longer, um, you know, Keir Starmer is saying he's going to totally turn that around so that it's improved no, by the end but, of this no, parliament. If, if, that is technically, if every family, if every family in this delivered. country is one pence better off, he can technically, in real terms, he can say, well, I've raised them. Raised by how much? How much well, better off? Well, the point is it? that it stagnated on over 14 years. Is there years, anything that so happened before turning that around 20... would be no, an no, astonishing I just want to thing to achieve. I, look, and if you're giving your viewers the impression that that wouldn't be a huge turnaround for the economy, something that lots of economists think literally is impossible, then I would suggest yeah. that you're giving them a misapprehension. Okay, no, I'm being a bad journalist. I mean, look, Richard, I, 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 you know me, I'm the biggest critic of the last Tory government in terms of their failures, so this is no way defending their record. But is any, did anything happen before 2010 when Tories got in that might have made um, caused some of the stagnation? Did anything happen in 2020 which your lot supported with bells on in terms of lockdowns? Like, Did anything happen in 2022 that affected energy prices? I mean, come on, things have been bad. Tories messed a lot of stuff up, but an awful lot of it was down to stuff that was outside of their control or stuff that you supported as well in your party. I'll tell you what I think is ultimately the problem. And this, uh, there are some people in the Labour Party who are responsible for this as well, but I think it's fundamentally a, a Conservative responsibility. And that's a lack of investment, yeah? True. That's the la the yeah. lack of investment in the UK economy is the fundamental problem. It's why productivity growth is low. It's why growth as a whole is low. And look at what's happened this summer. The government secured 63 billion quid in commitments from international investors during the investment They didn't summit. do that. People you were going to do that anyway. Major projects in clean energy, major pro uh, projects in AI. You've got this Spanish energy company, Iberdrola. They're going to double their investment to 24 oh, billion I, in the UK. Charity. No, they're going to come and make money out of us. That's exactly. what they're going to do. Exactly. They're yeah. going to come bring they, their well, you cash think they 
weren't yeah. going to they're anyway. Going to they weren't going to do it if Labour jobs. weren't in power and there hadn't been that investment summit. By the way, the most innovative, richest man in the world, um, didn't, wasn't Elon Musk wasn't invited because he'd written a hurty tweet uh, about uh, the, the, the Prime Minister a few weeks earlier. Um, here's the thing. One of these um, six milestones, not targets, not pledges, milestones, very, very different apparently, um, is decarbonising electricity grid by 2030. Not only is this unachievable, it won't happen. I'm telling you right now, it won't happen. Um, it's also unaffordable. And to do that, if we were able to do it, we are looking at massively, massively increasing our energy costs. We've already got some of the highest energy costs in the Western world, in fact, in the world at all. You ain't going to power up economy. You ain't going to make people richer. You ain't going to be able to afford to put more bobbies on the beat and treat more NHS patients and any of that. You're not going to be able to do any of that if people can't afford to go about life. You can't have jobs because people can't afford to run factories and shops and keep them open because energy prices are so high. You need to ditch that milestone before you can achieve any of the others. What do you say to that? Anybody who looks at geopolitics right now and thinks that fossil fuels are going to be cheap in five years is an utter idiot. I'm just, you know, no, no, no. no Anyone uh... who thinks the wind is going to blow every day and the sun's going to shine every day is an even bigger idiot. And that's exactly why that's not what the uh, uh, plan is based no. on. The plan is based on ensuring that the grid can cope with the sun shining up in the north, but you can still turn your kettle on in the south or the wind blowing in the south and you can still oh, use it to turn your lights there's on. Literally and no one, there's literally no one in that the grid, industry who thinks that. Which is what other that. countries have done. Oh, I mean, I, I love your faith in this, but this is this is Alice in Wonderland lunatic stuff. Uh, this is completely and utterly, uh, you know, utterly, utterly mad stuff. But look, what can we say? Um, Richard, I always so appreciate you coming on. We've got that speech coming up very soon. I know uh, Angela Rayner is going to be introducing Keir Starmer, um, so I'm sure we'll find out a lot more detail. But uh, Richard Powerside, thank you so much for joining us on that.